and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't watched this show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us at Myrick O'Connell, so everybody gets to do or specialize in what they like. I really like elder law. That's why I do this. So these presentations are really meant to supplement the seminars that I do uh, at the Ashland Senior Center in order to try to, and those are more about law, and these are more about people. So the goal of these is to really have you meet and, understand, and know about the programs and the people that are here in Ashland that you should be knowing about as a senior. One of those things you want to know about, uh, which you may already, or at least you've driven by, is the residences at Lee's Farm. Did I pronounce that right? Valley Farm. At, I, how did I do that? The residences at Valley Farm. Right. Lee's one's right around. It's because I'm getting old. It's because <laughs> I'm getting old. Yeah. Um, and Jason McCann is here, who actually runs the memory care community within the residences at Valley Farm. So Jason, thank you very much for coming. Thanks I for really appreciate me. it. Thank you. And so to start, can you just kind of tell us, so how did you get interested in doing this stuff? How did you end up, you know, really being the manager, right, at, at that, of that community, kind of which yeah. is a community within a community at, at, right. uh, at the residences? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been working with uh, the elderly for probably about 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, and got into doing... Uh, you, so you started when you were young. Right. right. I just turned 40, so... You just turned... Oh. Yeah, so I'm... See, see I'm, a, I'm so old. Like, everybody under about 45 looks like the same age <laughs> to me, right? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then I got into the programming uh, aspect of it, uh, uh, you know, driving the van for activities, uh, yeah. and then just worked my way up into uh, into management. That's so. very that's very interesting. And how yeah. long have you been now here? Uh, I've been there for almost six months. Yeah, so. and you're not a local. You're not an Ashland guy. You came from Webster. You said you came from far away. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm from the Webster area. So, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I love Ashland. This is this is great. Oh, here. and this is a, yeah, this is a wonderful community. Yeah, it is. So, so I, I wanted people to understand kind of how a, a memory care community within an assisted living community kind of works. Yeah. Uh, I know that I've, I've spoken here in other places about this whole notion that, and I know that Ashland is actively working on. Um, making itself a dementia-friendly community, a community where, which I, for want of a better definition, where I feel like I could always live, mm. no matter how confused I got, I could continue to live here because sure. this is my home. Yeah. And as I tell folks a lot, there, of course, you always want to stay at home, right? Right. And it's great unless it's not safe. You know, there sure. may be a point at which it's just, well, or it's too much hassle, right? And at that point, in a dementia-friendly community, there are, there are places where you can slip, stay in your community even if it's not necessarily in your house. And I, right. guess, that's, I guess that's kind of the way I think about yeah. your, you know, your community now. Yeah. So, so just, just, can you just tell me about you know, how, who, who, who's there, you know, yeah. what kinds of folks are there? Because yeah. uh, I think you had mentioned there were some couples, there were some singles, right? Yeah. And, 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 and how, how the programming works. Right. right. The, the residence at Valley Farm is a... Uh, an independent slash assisted living community with the the memory care component uh, we yeah. have the capacity for probably around 80 folks mm -hmm. um, 22 uh, in our memory care unit yeah. and there are wide variety of, of people that live there um, that that have a, a dementia diagnosis that's yeah. one of the things that you need to be in our memory care unit uh, we have folks that are, are, are rather high functioning yeah. uh, that are there for the safety component there for for activities yeah. uh, and then we have some folks who are, who are progressing through you know this disease that that definitely need a lot of more hands-on care yeah. um, you know the, the the big safety oversight um, so what we again and, and, and just as a curiosity are if you know are many of those folks from Ashland or there, there are, yeah, to... there's quite a few from around here. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Natick area, Ashland, Framingham. Um, so yeah, there's it's folks there's that lot. are close. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's it, once again, it's been my experience that a lot of times folks who just need need some some help, right, tend to want to be close to where there's family. So they it may be that they're not in their own town, sure, but that they move because. You're close to your daughter, or you're close to somebody. Right now, now did you say are there some are there some couples in the memory care community? Yeah, we actually uh, we do have some couples. We actually have a couple uh, that one lives in our memory care community and one I lives see. in the assisted living community. I see. I see. Which is uh, which is definitely it's it's interesting how how the dynamics work and everything like that. But they they want to be together. But of course, they want to be together. Right. 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 So and that's that's kind of so. Is the memory care community is everything is 
How many floors are there at, at the at the residence? Yeah, uh, there's three floors at the residence. The yeah. memory care community is on the first floor. Yeah. Uh, and they have their own separate programming, uh, dining room, uh, nursing facilities, basically. So it's all yeah. it's all inside. And 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 t so tell me about kind of what your day would be if you were if you were a person who were living in the in the memory care community yeah um, kind of from the begin from morning to night right yeah. just give me a sense of that we uh, we have care staff that are there 24 hours a day seven days a week yeah. um, so the care staff are there to assist residents if they need it uh, with with getting up in the morning uh, with their activities of daily living uh, and when you, when you're going like does everybody eat breakfast at the same time uh, in the memory care uh, unit we do yeah. um, just because we need that structure um, yeah. But that's not to say we do have one resident that likes to get up a little bit later. So she, she'll come down at about 9, 930 and have breakfast. We, we, it's, we want it to be personal yeah. uh, and we want it yeah. to be as home-like as possible, but yeah. also providing some structure too. And, and, but, and tell me about that structure, about kind of your, your sense from once again being there every day yeah. of how, how that interplays with you know, life when you've, got, when you've got some stage of dementia. Right. So basically uh, some people think that People with dementia don't need a, a schedule, a, a routine, but it's so crucial because they, they might not remember. Um, so crucial because, again, we need to provide structure because we want them to be in a safe environment. We want them yeah. to, to be engaged, to be active. So we'll, we'll uh, have breakfast uh, probably around 8, 8.30, yeah. uh, and then the residents will go uh, right into activities uh, if, if they choose to do so. Uh, programming uh, starts at about 9.30 in the morning. Activities not compulsory. Uh, right, yes. Yeah, so uh, exercise, uh, ha uh, craft all sorts of uh, different activities to keep the residents engaged throughout the day because yeah. we, if, uh, if we find that the residents aren't engaged, they're going to be bored, they're going to they're gonna wander, they're, they're going to think about, you know, going home and, yeah. and all these other things. So, uh, and, and the more active they are physically and mentally, the better, uh, the, you know, I sleep better at night if I have a hard day's work. So, uh, right. and that's the goal, you know, where, where we are. Right. And so, and, and, and so in terms of the exercise direction, I bet you've got people who've got kind of vary all over the spectrum. Sure. In yeah. terms of what they can do. As right? long as they're, mm. uh, you know, participating somewhat, that that's a victory. And we want it to be failure free. We want the residents yeah. to feel good about what they're doing. We're not doing, uh, you know, line dancing or, or anything like that, but we do right. have a Tai Chi program. Nobody's doing push-ups. No push-ups. No, yeah. No push well, I, I bet you there's one guy there that could probably that do push-ups. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we, we, we do have a, a structured program um, for the residents there to, to get them to feel like they're, they're being a part of something. Even if they can't move their legs very well, they can move their arms. Or, yeah. or if they can't move that well, they're still involved with the group sitting there enjoying uh, everybody else's company. So. And, 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 and as that programming is happening, and once again, you've got staff that I bet they have been there for a long time and, yeah. and, and, and are really kind of getting to know each, each of those folks. Right. So I think for the, for the benefit of folks who are, who are at home, so how, how does, you, how does you, the way in which you interact with someone change, right? Or how, it, how can it be better? if you know that the person has dementia in terms of how you're interacting with them. You just kind of talk about that a little bit because yeah. I think that, that you know, one of the, once again, one of the things I've, I've talked about with folks is one of the great things in a memory care, in a, in a, in a dementia-friendly community is if you've got a, a, an, Ill, an assisted living that has a memory care community in it, you have this set of players who are dealing with folks with dementia all right. the time and who therefore just by virtue of that experience have got this wealth of knowledge about how to confront different situations. So I'm interested in how, how you do it and, and how, you th how this could apply to folks who are at home right now, right? right, who may be taking care of a husband or a wife or a parent, you know, any number of folks who've got, got dementia. Yeah, I mean, over the years, um, it, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, I make yeah. mistakes all the time. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I said this the wrong way. Um, but, but that's how you learn, right? Right, absolutely. Like, right? Yeah, right. It, it, experience means you made the mistake and now you know to not do that again. Right, and, and there are suggestions, there are ways uh, uh, about going about it, um, using empathy instead of sympathy. We, we what, don't- Explain that. So we don't want to feel sorry for the person. If, if I um, you know, were to not be feeling well, yeah. I, I would rather have somebody 
not feel sorry for me, but to, to empathize with me, to feel what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, because you know what? We've all been scared, tired, lonely, confused, uh, which a lot of our residents are. So if you get down on their level um, to, to empathize with them, to feel what they feel, yeah. uh, you, you'll definitely get a more positive result when you know a, a resident needs to take their medication or, or wants to walk out the front door but can't and, and, and it's zero degrees out. Um, right. So what, so what do you do? What, I mean, what do you do? Somebody wants to walk out the door. Yeah. That's a classic, and it's zero degrees. Sure, Not good. Right. And, Not and good. that's the thing. I mean, we, we find folks coming to us after a, a catastrophe, after a, a big moment where they go outside, they wander down the street. Yeah. Um, we, we, we have our words, uh, and that's what I tell everybody when they first start here. We, we have our words, and how we use them are, are huge. Um, yeah. we, we never want to be dismissive. We never want to think that, oh, well, um, you know, Joe's looking to go home again. He'll, he'll get over it in a few minutes. Those few minutes to Joe could be 10 years. Could be forever. Yeah, could and, be forever. and so that's right. we, we also- Could ruin the whole day. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too, is that we want to we wanna set people up for success, but you know, in those times where, where folks are having a bad moment or, yeah. or really struggling, that's when you know we we need to focus on that one individual but not overwhelm that one individual uh, I, i've seen again like i said i've seen so many times over the years where um you know a, a resident uh, somebody's having a bad day so instead of having one person assist we have three person assist, and then it's we're all crowding around and that's what we tend to do at home i mean my grandmother suffered from vascular dementia and you which at that time was called what uh i, I, I my grandfather called it headaches headaches she had headaches and right. that's what was wrong with her so my, my mother had hardening of the artery right, right? So, yeah. early 90s right. right and and so it's it's all a question of, of how we're dealing with it and and looking back on it and and seeing how we dealt with my grandmother at home with no services trying to do it on our own um, I, we could have with done, no training of no course. training of course uh, we're just we're learning every day was new um, and, and, and sometimes and you don't talk to the neighbors about it because oh it's kind of oh, embarrassing yeah, oh right, god absolutely yeah, right. so and, and that's that. that's the biggest thing is people are, are asking for help more people are, are, are seeking out uh, you know us and, and other the, the senior centers and where where yeah. they can go and have have an outlet um, so and, and that's the biggest thing is just knowing that you know what I can't do it on my own um, and like we were talking about before, a perfect example is we had a, a, a woman who moved in a couple months ago yeah. and was, was in oh, a, yeah, this is a great, yeah, this is a great a unsafe situation with her husband. Husband had total uh, what we call caregiver burnout, um, was there trying to take care of her, uh, couldn't do it. Lost his grip. Yeah, right. suffering from his own ailments, uh, couldn't do it. So she moved in. Uh, he stayed at home and, and took care of himself a little bit because we're not focusing on ourselves. We're focusing on the individual. Right. Um, two months go by. She, she, she got better. Uh, physical therapy activities, being involved, a, a healthy yeah. diet. Um, she just went home last week with her husband. That's um, pretty great. Yeah. So now, now as part of that, were, were you able to give the husband some training in yeah, terms of kind uh, of how to? Yeah. Once again, how to structure his day it, and how to, how yeah, to deal with it, some of that. He got his training from watching us, uh, and that's the biggest thing. We right. we never want to. Uh, we have families coming in all the time, and, and and they're you know communicating differently than we would because. They, they they they're not trained but so by by watching us and we're not perfect by any means but but having the training and and seeing over the years how to how to interact with somebody with dementia you, you learn by watching you just learn by watching sure so so in addition to having the memory care community there do you offer any of uh, I want to say caregiver support groups yeah. or training or anything to yeah. folks in the community. Yeah, we have a support group once a month. We're working on the time you do. right now. Yeah, so we're restructuring the time. It was later on in the evening, which yeah. we found wasn't really working. Wasn't working, right. So we're going to do one earlier in the day. Uh, we're going to have people coming in to, to speak, uh, yeah. as well as myself there for... Yeah. 
for any uh, questions. Or, oh, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. That's so. terrific. And, and that, is that, will that be just open to folks like fr right from the area? Yeah, yeah. So it's open to the public. Um, and if people are interested in it, how are they going to know that this is coming to happen? They can call the residents. Um, number, and the it, phone number is? Yeah, it's 508 yeah. 532 yeah. 3197. Okay, and, and what I'll try to do for, for when the show goes go, goes on goes on the air is I'll also try to have a banner so that they can get your email address. And all, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And all that address. That's yeah. that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, that's a wonderful idea. So yeah. so I just want to go back to, to 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 the. Tell me a little bit about I want to for want of a better term like the architecture or the design of the memory care community because because yeah. I know that in addition to having this kind of staff mm. competence right with experience and stuff that that. Some of the features of the way the des of the design right. actually, in and of themselves, help. You know, and I, I, you know, I've, I've heard folks talk about using using certain colors, yep. about having. Well, so just talk about that a little bit. So the 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 community and every community is different. Uh, right. But uh, again, the goal is to have a uh, kind of a simple uh, apartment because that's kind of where you know that's that's home. That's uh, home. We we don't want. Uh, By the way, are folks living in singles or living in? Uh, for the, for the non-married couples. Yeah, so they're single apartments. We yeah. do have uh, a couple uh, apartments that are shared apartments uh, yeah. for folks that uh, want to have a roommate or yeah. or, or, or kind of uh, need a, a little less um, help financially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we do have a couple of those, but we, we want to have a, uh, you know, not a room packed full of furniture. Uh, but a room that has the simple needs that the resident will need. We want family photos. We want, you know, a, a warm, inviting environment, uh, lighter colors. Uh, lighter colors. Yeah, it just we, we want it to be bright. Um, yeah. If you think of, uh, I would say, not assisted living years ago, but maybe a, a skilled nursing facility, dark. Very dark. Uh, yeah. Big halogen lights, uh, you know, fluorescence, and it was just, you walk in and you're kind of, uh, you know, white or dark. Um, so yeah, everybody's everybody's worst nightmare. I mean, you know that, and so often I think people will drive by, for instance, just in, in a assisted living community, yeah. and say, "I don't even want to go in. I'm I'm not going to a nursing home." Right, I know. Because 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 it, it, it sometimes from the exterior it looks like well it's a multi-story building, sure. you know, so it kind of can present the right. way a nursing home. Sign present. out front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we. Uh, in, in our assisted living side, we have folks that still drive. Um, we, we have really? folks, yeah, sure, absolutely, that, that, that go out during the day that are there just for the, for the environment, for the, right. for the three meals a day and, um, you know, to, to be sociable and to partake in the activities if they want to. Just um, to have the activity. So now I yeah. just want to go, so I want to go back for a second. So yeah. the rooms are, you know, that are pretty straightforward. So is there anything special about the dining room? Yeah. Or about the about the yeah. Just talk about the Again, the the color plates that we use. Yeah. Uh, we we want the food to to show up. Um, it, what, is that, what does that mean? Well, basically, again, we, we're dealing with folks that have a diminished uh, capacity. Uh, dementia affects the brain. Yeah. So, which, again, some, some people don't even know that. Uh, and how we process information, how, how we're going to think about what a cheeseburger looks like or, or yeah. what, what, is, what is this juice. So the, the yeah. different colors that we have are, are there to help the residents be able to see the food, to, to, to be able to, to see those choices. When yeah. we have a meal... Um, in our in our uh, memory care community, we have show plates, so we already show plates. Yeah, what so basically, we we have a couple choices for an entree for, mm -hmm. for lunch and dinner. Too many choices, not good. We're not going to give our residents a big menu to choose from fifty things. Bad idea. We're no, going to give idea. them two choices. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna pre-plate the food um, so that we can show the residents. Oh, I see. So that they can. So you're giving them like a model. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. like it's like you not not do you want the chicken or the fish? It's like do you want this plate or do you want this? Yeah, plate? Oh, because, what a great idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah, some, yeah. some folks can't can't communicate. They they've lost the words, but they still have the ability to process right. what baked chicken is or what you know lamb is. So uh, I'll point to that one. And so, and we want to give them as much independence as possible because, again, that's basically a lot of what's being taken away from them from this disease. So, and as I much choice as possible. And I suppose that's the great that's the greatest challenge because I think I think the so much of the lost the sense of lost self respect yeah. comes from that sense of oh God I'm getting so helpless. Yeah. And and it, and it must be this constant challenge to to when you've got folks who've got who've got real needs 
to be not doing that, to be not trying to do everything for them, uh, right? Right, right. And, and, and instead to understand that even if they're struck, you know, it may take a long time to tie my shoes. Right. But I'm going to tie my shoes. Right. And then what you know? a good job you did try, and, tying and your shoes. And how great that was. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Just, yeah. It goes from brushing your teeth and, and to combing your hair and to, you know, uh, drawing a line. I mean, it, you, you just, we want the residents to do as much as possible. And right, yes. that is a fine balance of... We want to make sure they're getting what they need, but also doing as much for themselves as possible. So tell me about getting outside. Yeah. Can folks get out? Do folks go outside? What, yeah, what, sure. What, what, what is that, and how does that integrate into the other things that are yeah, happening? Yeah, so basically um, uh, we, we have uh, weekly outings. We have no. a 14-passenger van that we go out uh, you know, shopping, go to the movies, go, oh. out, go all sorts of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we try and get the residents out. And are those integrated with the, with the, with the rest of the community, yeah, or are those sure. usually separate? No, yeah, we, we definitely we have joint trips with our assisted living side and yeah. our uh, memory care community yeah. where we go out and see the leaders leaves and um, go down to you, you know the Charles River and, and do all these different types of things we want it to be as as normal as possible right um, so we, we have entertainers coming in once a week um, we'll, we'll, we have a nice courtyard out in the back weather permitting that the residents can just go outside um, we you know I've been there a half a dozen times I've never seen the court yet. yeah so yeah. this will make me go see the all court right, right that's now. good that's so that's great. but I mean we want it to be a, as home like as possible at your home, yeah. you can go outside. Um, we, we don't want it to feel like a locked uh, community, right. which it is. And I, and I think that's, that's, a piece, that's a piece of that is, is kind of keeping your orientation to day and night too. And just, sure. I mean, I may not remember what I had for breakfast, but I can certainly know if it's a nice day. Right. I can feel the warmth of that yep. nice day, you know, right. or I can know if it's raining. Right. 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 So if you're in the in the courtyard in the back, yep. is that is that I don't want to say secure? Yeah, it's right. secure. Yeah. But it's but it's not like obvious big fences. Blah, 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 you know? No, no, it's it's nice uh, privacy wooden fences like you'd see right. see it in, in just a nice like home. somebody's backyard. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's backyard, and I suppose yeah. that's the challenge just is to is to have people feeling home. Right. Because when you set when they say I don't ever want to go to a nursing home. Yeah. It's I don't want to be in this institution. Right. Right, so yeah. so to be able to, to kind of capture home must be a right. wonderful and thing. Right, and that's what we want. We want people to bring in their pictures, their own furniture, to have people visit, um, yeah. to, to keep things as normal as possible. And now do you find that for the folks who are there, that, that family comes? Sure, yeah, yeah. We have, we have great families, very involved, uh, very, very uh, giving and, and attentive, and that's that's what we love because uh, it's a team effort. I mean, right. we, we can't do it all ourselves. The families right. have all the answers. They have all the tricks. They have all the tips. Uh, so we because they they know the history. Sure, yeah. They know they can tell you everything about right yeah, in right. terms of what can what's going to evoke a positive or a really negative memory. Right, and then the family and, totally yeah, knows. Yeah, absolutely. And then and then you know I, I see some families coming in that are, are, are surprised when when their mom or their dad or their grandmother is doing an activity that they've never done before and they're enjoying it so those are the cool moments right i've seen i've talked to so many people that say my mother would never do this you know, <laughs> right. you know, there's no chance she's never going to leave this house she's like never going to do this right i'm just going to i'm just going to mention this, this one other thing i think that's another another piece of this 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 fear of even even trying this is yeah. once again you associate it with oh if I you know if I go to a nursing home no one's ever going to come to see me right but it ha and it has been my experience that if folks are in a nursing home nobody comes to see them and the re I, one of the reasons I think is that pe it, is that it's such a ter terrible environment You're right right that people are just very uncomfortable going this whereas no where go. it, whereas if you're if you're in a in a community where the visitors feel welcome sure right yeah it 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 really increases the amount of visiting. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because people are going to have enjoy going there. Right. We we have common areas. We have uh, spaces where families can come in and visit. They can join the activities if they want. Or most do. Um, really. They can sit down and watch TV. Uh, we we definitely. They can take if they can come over to the memory care unit and yep. take their mother or father or their grandparents next door to the to the main dining area and have a meal. So I see. It's totally open like that. So I so so. Kind of to summarize, I think, so you want to go see this place. You just ought to go see this place. It's like when I tell people about, you know, it's some of my presentations and I talk about long-term care insurance and people say, oh, no, I couldn't do that. You ought to check it. I talk about reverse mortgages. Oh, no, I'll never, you should check it, right? You, you should, if, if you were an, a, a senior in Ashland, you ought to go just because you want, you want to know 
if something happens to you, if something happens to one of your loved ones, when it's not an emergency, you want to check out a place like this so that if there is an emergency, someone's in the hospital and the question is they're going to get discharged, you know that this might be one of your options. So it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a one, in many ways to me, it's a gift to Ashland because it's, it's a, a component of what can really be a dementia-friendly community. I appreciate your coming in, Jason, a lot to My talk pleasure. about this. Once again, I'll have, we'll, ha we'll make sure that there's a, there's, there's a banner on this there's, so that you can get the contact information if you want to go visit this place. Um, not because you're going, because you you're going, you know, you're not signing up the next day just to get a sense of <laughs> no it. No pressure. Right? No pressure. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to see you, seeing you on the next episode or the next installment of Bridge Run Briefs. Thank you.